Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge and welcome back to Founder's Fortune, where last time out we continued our efforts to educate young Betty here, and I think we're doing quite well. I think we're doing a pretty good job of showing her how the world works and teaching her important life skills and all that kind of good stuff. So if we take a look down here, you can see that she currently has 10 positive childhood experiences, which is very good, and only one negative one. And I think that came from when we tried to make her learn too much stuff. She just got really fed up of life having to just learn stuff because it was a little bit boring. So yeah, that was kind of entirely our fault. That was avoidable, I think. But whatever the case, 10 versus one is pretty good. So these translate into traits when she actually becomes an adult. And then she's got three education points as well. And those translate into skills. How exactly that works, I do not know. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, she has 10 positive childhood experiences. I don't think she's going to get 10 positive traits because that would make her into some sort of super person when she actually becomes an adult. So I'm not entirely sure how this works, but we'll find out, I imagine. We will see what happens. So this is very good. Things are going very well. She's doing very well, is Betty. Also, last time, we finally completed the strong watchtower research. It's finally done. Look, there it is. It's all finished. And now we're concentrating on unlocking the secrets of forging. And then we dealt with some goblin attacks and some pirates and all that kind of ordinary sort of, you know, standard founder's fortune fare. So I think today, Today, we're going to concentrate on the research because this is really the end goal. We need to get all that research done and then build a shipyard and then, I don't know, sail away or something. I don't know. We'll find out when we've got the shipyard in. We just need to get to the end of that research tree. That's what we need to do. Shipbuilding is the final thing. So that's what we're going to head toward. But also today, I think we're going to play Fairy Godmother again. We're going to grant some wishes. Let's make people jolly and happy. And also, let's see if we can't get them some life satisfaction points. And then we can give people all sorts of useful traits and such like. So I think the first order of the day is to get some scholar robes crafted. We talked about this toward the end of the previous part. Because I think what we're going to do is, Rosalind and Horst, they spend a lot of their time over here doing lots of clever, brainy, researchy things, looking at scrolls and analysing crystals and all that kind of good stuff. So it would make sense for them to actually have the scholar's robes on so they can do all of the clever, brainy stuff a little bit quicker. Because yeah, Horst, yes, okay, he's got his lovely crafting clothes on with his amazing kind of floppy hat type thing there. But he does crafting so very infrequently that there's, yeah, we're not really getting much of a benefit from these. We might as well have him being very good at research, given that that's where we're kind of, you know, focusing most of our efforts. And then Rosalind again, yes, okay, you can go and cut down a tree a little bit more effectively, but it's fine. We've got quite a lot of wood right now. We're sort of relatively settled in our kind of base and our resources and such like. In fact, the resources are looking wonderful. 830 raw food. We've maxed out the amount of raw food we can have compared to any 50 cooked food. Could we possibly do some cooking? That would be useful. We have no pumpkins. We do have quite a few potatoes and we've got some apples and we have some strawberries. We've got quite a lot of wheat as well. Could we not make some bread? and some cakes and things. Come on, let's get cooking, shall we? Let's do some cooking as well. But uh, but yeah, I think what we'll do is, yeah, let's get uh, let's get these things set up over here. So Taylor's Workshop, and we want to get two lots of Master Scholar's Robe. So 60 cloth, 40 coins. Yeah, this is absolutely fine. So get two of those done. And then, do you know what? Whilst you're there, why don't we also get some Master Forester's Clothes? Because we can sell those for 350 coins. We might as well do that. In fact, we'll have some, won't we? We will have some from those two. We'll have extra clothes to sell. Do you know what? Make one more. It won't do any harm. Um, hang on. Can we put that above? Oh, no, no, no. I want them. No, I want you to do the, the scholar's robes first, though. They're more important. OK, take that away. It's fine. There we go. So now I imagine Horst is going to get on that relatively soon. I mean, OK, he's over here. He's doing some weaving at the minute. It's fine. He's turning all that lovely cotton into more useful cloth. Um, okay, that's fine. Yeah, you crack on, horse. You finish that. And then, if you could get on with making your fancy new outfits, that would be wonderful. Whilst we wait for horse to get all that kind of stuff sorted, let's have a look at what is going on with our food provision stuff over here. So, I think the campfire, I think somebody was just using it a second ago to make some more food. I think they were topping up on something. I'm fairly certain I saw something being done over here. But whatever the case, that's kind of fine because we've got the campfire stuff. We've got baked potatoes and baked tomatoes. I thought we'd moved away from those folks. I thought we'd moved into more exciting areas of cuisine rather than just, you know, the standard baked potato and baked tomato, but okay. So over here in the kitchen, we can't make pumpkin stew because we've not got any pumpkins. Makes perfect sense. However, fruit salad, yeah, we can do that. Two apples, two strawberries, and one bit of wood. We could make some fruit salad and we can definitely make cheese because we have 48 lots of milk. 
So we could make a lot of cheese. So I don't quite know why people are not using the kitchen. I don't know why that's not a thing. And then over here as well, we can make much in the way of bread. And in fact, we should be having 20 bread in stock and 20 strawberry cakes, which sound delicious, and 20 apple strudels. We should have all these things available. Somebody should be coming over to get working on this pretty soon. I mean, how many of our farmers can actually use the, how many can use the bakery? So Hannah, hang on, farming. Hannah can. I think she might be the only person. Ah, the problem is that Hannah is very, very much overworked. Yeah, we need both Annika and Wolfgang to become slightly better at doing the farming because then, yes, then they can cook at the kitchen, which will take the pressure off of poor Hannah, who has to do all the cooking, pretty much, apart from the campfire stuff. Okay, that's fine. I mean, they'll get there. They will get there in due course. I mean, it's the last day of summer, so we'll be moving to autumn slash fall in not too long. We'll, then we'll get pumpkins. That'll be handy. We'll get lots of lovely pumpkins coming in. Very, very useful. So then hopefully we could make, you know, the pumpkin stew and whatever. Ah, there we go. Well done, Hannah. We got there in the end. You're making bread. You're making cake. You're doing the macarena in front of the uh, kind of oven thing. It's all good. It's all good. Right, there we go. That's looking much better. We've got bread. We've got cake. I mean, we've got cake. Life is good. Life is good. If only we could have a cup of tea to go with it, it would be perfect. Life would be splendid. But there we go. So she has done a little bit of the stuff. She has done a little bit of cooking. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Over here, however, I do notice that we've said produce infinite. How about keep in stock 20 of those and keep in stock 20 of those and keep in stock 20 of those just to make sure that we always have some of those rather than saying produce infinite. We'll just make a, you know, a, a sort of a finite amount of those. And then we know where we are with our resources and what have you. But yes, anyway, I was saying, oh, who's had an allergic reaction? Hang on. Rosalind. Rosalind, what have you done? What are you allergic to? You're allergic to lactose and you've probably had some cheese or a glass of milk or something. Um, do you know what? It's, we'll have to have a look, actually, because she does seem to be taking a bit of damage. She is taking a little bit of damage. Okay, I think she'll be fine. I think she'll be fine. If we just put time on too super quick, I think she should be okay. Let's just make sure that nothing happens from this. Now, she's okay. She has taken quite a chunk of damage from that, though. But again, I mean, on your head be it, I think. Oh, she's taking a healing potion for it. Maybe that's what they do. They kind of go, do you know what? I really want that cheese. I love cheese. I know it's going to make me feel terrible. So I'll have some cheese and then I'll just go and have a lovely healing potion to heal up. Okay, that's fine. Rosalind is all good. Anyway, I think I got distracted, which is no great surprise. Um, so yeah, it's not too long until winter. We've got ourselves not long at all until... Okay, there's fall. There we go. The next season has kind of come around already. Fall has fallen, so that's splendid. So um, yes, then it's going to be winter. So whilst it's winter, we could just get our farmers to read up on farming over here to get their skills up. They could just use the bookcase. That would be quite a good idea. In fact, we've got two bookcases because I think Dr. Pete has one in his house as well. So yeah, we'll get them trained up so they can all use the kitchen and they can all use the oven thing over here which means that, yeah, we've got more people cooking food. And that doesn't mean, yeah, that means that people aren't sort of abstracted away from the farm quite so much and such like. But there we go. I mean, there's the other whole season. We've got a whole season to get through first, but the pumpkins are going in. The pumpkins are going in. This is wonderful to see. Okay, this is very good. And in only half a day's time, some pirates are going to turn up demanding some beer. Okay, so we're going to have to make sure we've got that. But yeah, they want 25. We've got 38. Everything is going to be fine. And Horst, how are you doing? Have you completed one lot yet? Yes, I think you have. I think you might be working on the second lot of the Master Scholar's Robes. Okay, this is very good. So Horst, where is your clothing rack thing? It's just that. Okay, we're going to change things around a bit, Horst. We're going to put you into Master Scholar's Robes. Now, we've not seen these before. We have not seen the Master Scholar Robes before. They look interesting. Okay, I, I, the hat looks okay. I mean, okay, they'll look better on. They'll look better on. And Rosalind, you do a lot of this stuff as well. So you can also have some very, very fancy Master Scholar's robes. I don't imagine they're going to get up and put them on right now. Oh, they are. They are. Hang on. Horst, turn around. Let's take a look. Oh, hang on. Come outside. We'll take a look at you outdoors. Oh, yes. Hang on. There we go. That's better. You've got nothing surrounding you. That looks good. I like that. Do you know what? I prefer that to his his craftsman's gear. I quite like that. That looks good. I like that. I do like the red kind of 
shoulder kind of things there. They're very, very nice. And the hat, it's a good hat. I don't know if it's a special type of scholarly hat. There you go. It's got venting on the top. Look, it's not kind of entirely covered on the top. So when your brain is going overtime and you're know, working really hard and generating a lot of heat, the heat can come out of this hole in the top of the thinking hat. <laughs> okay, there we go. Well, this is wonderful. So now they should be able to research things a little bit quicker. I mean, I don't imagine it's going to make that much difference. That is quick. I think that is significantly quicker researching a scroll than it used to be. I think that is helping a great deal. Um, hello, Captain Hans, how are you? Yes, we'll give you the stuff, it's fine. We've got some beer, yeah, there you go, bye-bye. I mean, the pirates, or Captain Hans's pirates, they don't kind of hate us quite so terribly. They're not gonna attack us on sight. They don't like us overly much either, but okay, that's fine, that's fine, there we go. But yeah, I think that's making a difference. I think that is making a very good difference. Oh, and look at that. The two of them. Oh, it feels very scholarly round here all of a sudden. Look at this. Look at this place of learning. It is all very wonderful. And yeah, they're flying through the research crystals now. Wolfgang is now a level five farmer. Well done, Wolfgang. Right, okay, you can immediately go to help cooking at the kitchen. There you go. So now we've got an extra person that can use the kitchen, which is very, very good indeed. So Wolfgang, can you please go and cook some stuff? How are we looking for cooked food? We've got some bread, we've got some cake, we've got some bugs, delicious. Okay, where are the bugs? Come on, where are the bugs? Oh, they're on the pumpkins. Oh no, the pumpkins are really, really difficult to get our hands on. They only grow in this one particular season and we haven't got many of them. It take ages to grow. Come on, come on, Wolfgang, sort it out. The bug infestation is over. And are you replanting the ones that we lost? Yes, it does seem so. And Horst is a level four gajillion craftsman. Okay, well done, Horst. That's just showing off. Ah, yes, somebody made a very good point in the comments on the previous video, I think it was, about how we could do some different things with our research. So currently, we are forced to do forging. That is it. It's the only option we can do. There are three options left, but we have to unlock forging to unlock these other things here. So unfortunately, we can't do what this person suggested in the comments. We can't do that right now because we only have one research option available. But when we've done forging, come with me if you like, come with me to the future. Imagine if you will, that forging is complete. Just pretend that forging is done. So we now have a choice of weapon forging and armor forging. Weapon forging takes 40 crystals and 15 scrolls. Armor forging is 50 crystals and 20 scrolls. So, you know, quite a lot of crystals, quite a lot of scrolls going into those. So let's say we pick weapon forging and it takes a little while, but we get through all of the crystals in weapon forging and we get through as many scrolls as we can in weapon forging. And then we run out of scrolls. And instead of sitting about waiting for the merchant people to come by so we can buy some more scrolls off them, what we could do is we could just turn our attention to armor forging. So we'll leave weapon forging sort of in a state of limbo, if you like, incomplete, and then we go and do armor forging and we do as much as we can on the crystal research before then the traders can buy again and we can buy more scrolls and then we can finish weapon forging. You don't have to kind of finish one particular bit of research, it seems. You can sort of flit about between them and, you know, spend some crystals on that one, some crystals on this one. And I mean, we haven't done that at all, I don't think, throughout this entire run because I wasn't aware that you could do that. I thought you had to focus on one thing and that was kind of it. But, um, but no, it turns out that, yeah, we can switch about. So if we do run out of scrolls, and we've done all the gem research for weapon forging, we can then just go to armor forging and just sort of carry on doing some research stuff, which I think will be very, very helpful indeed. I mean, right now, a little way off, a little way off that, but we have got Brainy Corner still. People are here doing lots of work. We've got Horst doing lots of scroll research. And then, yeah, Rosalind. Rosalind is just flying through the crystal research. That is going to take no time at all. I mean, we might possibly run out of crystals. Um, and this is excellent news. A trader. This is what we were just talking about. We need to go to the traders to buy the lovely things. Right, so let us just let Dr. Pete finish this particular bit of um, whatever he's making. It's a healing potion because he's over at the healing potion table. So you finish that, Dr. Pete, if you would be so kind, lovely. Um, I don't know where you're going now. Are you making medicine? No, you are not, Dr. Pete. You're coming over here. Must remember they're going to land over here. And yes, let us have a chat with the trader. In fact, let's try and talk to the trader first. Let's talk to the trader just to see what we can do. See if we can get uh, diplomatic relations up because that was, you know, it's always helpful. It's always a useful thing. Not that time, unfortunately. Right, and then we'll go and do some trading with you. So what do you have? Can we buy 
all of the scrolls from you. Right, we don't have much in the way of money, unfortunately. So we might need to sell some bits and bobs. Right, apprentice scholar's robes. Yeah, you can have those. You're welcome. And then master forester's clothes. We have two of those. And the other thing is, yeah, do we actually want to sell both of those? That means that Rosalind will never go back into her forester's clothes. I don't think we need them. I really don't think we need them. So we'll sell that and that. That gives us 950 coins. And then we've got 26 illness medicine and 10 healing potions. So how about we sell five healing potions and let's sell 20 illness medicine. So that's going to get us 2,450 coins, which is a silly amount of money. But then if we buy the six scrolls, that means we're going to get 1,557 coins. That seems like quite a lot. That's quite a lot. I mean, we are making a thousand off of our illness medicine. Why don't we cut that back the tiniest bit? Why don't we sell 15? We're still going to make 1,300 of your monies. Yeah, okay. We'll go for that, please. So we'll buy as many scrolls as possible. Now, somebody else in the comments, and again, thank you, comment section. Thank you for giving me important information and useful things. Somebody else said that you can talk to anybody who comes from the Traders Guild. So this person here we've spoken to, and yes, they had some stuff to sell. But yeah, somebody in the comments said that this person over here, this guard, might have different things to sell. So it's certainly worth taking a look. Let's go over and talk to you. I mean, we can certainly trade with you. Do you have different things, however? Uh, no, you don't. Okay, right. So they don't have different things. The Traders Guild have arrived, and no matter who we talk to, they are selling the same things. Okay, that's fine. I mean, apart from, yeah, we've then got the craftsman's clothes and the farmer's clothes and whatever stuff that... No, no, we didn't sell them those. No, I'm talking nonsense. We didn't sell them those. Alas, though, no scrolls, which would have been useful. They would have been useful. But never mind, never mind. We now have ourselves 14 more scrolls, which I think we must have researched... Yeah, we must have gone through a few scrolls because the bar is crept up a little bit. So it looks like possibly we might have enough scrolls to finish forging research. That would be very nice, wouldn't it? That'd be very handy. And they're over here again. Now they've got their fancy clothes on. They're loving this. They're loving a bit of uh, loving a bit of research life. Okay, right, you two, crack on. Research more, please. And Dr. Pete has hurt his arm. Okay, Dr. Pete, can you please splint your own arm? I mean, I don't know why I'm telling you to do this. You're a doctor who has hurt his own arm. Diagnose, Dr. Pete. Self-diagnose. Okay, so here we go. And now you're going to have a splint. Arm splints and faster work speed, and there you go. And in fact, Dr. Peter's come over to join in some research fun. Look at that. He's over here working on the scrolls. In fact, this might be quite useful to see how quick Horst actually does do scroll research. It's it's significantly faster with that on, isn't it? Dr. Pete's got through a tiny, tiny bit of his scroll research, whereas Horst got about, what, a quarter of the way round? So yeah, that is significantly quicker. Those scholar robes are brilliant. Yeah, let's see if we can look again. So Dr. Pete... Oh, you two. <laughs> Always ruining my plans, Peter and Horst. Okay, never mind. Um, we're needing some materials. Oh, these are our buddies. These are our friends. They would like one lot of master craftsman's clothes. I mean, I don't know why you need that, goblin friends. But do you know what? In order to stay friends with you, because I think it's nice that we're good buddies... Yeah, go on. I know they're worth a bit of money, but it's fine. It's okay. We can uh, we can always craft some more if we need some things to sell. So yeah, okay. There you go. Oh, we they like us an awful lot. Sixty-eight relationship points. That is very good. And do you know what? We have got a lot of cloth. Let's make some more things to trade. How about just master farmers' clothes? Nice and straightforward. They cost sixty cloth to make. We've got two hundred and forty. We can make four lots of those, and that will make us. Right, they're 350 each, four lots of that, two lots is 700, math with penge. So I had two more lots of the 700 will be 1,400 coins, everybody. I just did that in my head, go me. So yeah, just making four of those is 1,400 of the monies, if the traders want to buy them, actually. But actually, is it not a good idea to make some different clothes? So if a trader comes by and wants forester's clothes, but not farmer's clothes, we've at least got something to sell. Do you know what? That might be a good idea, actually. Let's make that and that. Let's make two each of those. There we go. So two lots of farmer's clothes, two lots of forester's clothes. And the forester's clothes fetch the same price. They're still worth 350 coins. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Let's crack on. What's everybody up to? Betty, how are you? 
How are you? What is going on here? You've now got 13 positive childhood experiences. I noticed that probably most of your positive childhood experiences are coming from you eating cake. I can completely sympathise, Betty. <laughs> All the best moments in my life have come with cake as well. It's a wonderful thing. Right, here we go. Dr. Pete and Horst are both researching scrolls. So let's have a little look. If I put time on to very quick how this is going. So Dr. Pete is on sort of the nine o'clock, if you like, and Horst is rapidly catching up on... Oh, Horst. <laughs> you and your hunger, Horst. I, I, I can't ever... We can't ever get an accurate comparison of this. They keep wandering off too much. Right, there you go. Dr. Pete is almost completing this. But look, a horse is very rapidly catching up. Yeah, they really do help. They are very, very good indeed. Why didn't we put them in those earlier? We could have had so much more research stuff done. Okay, this is very good. Rosalind is a level 23 scholar. I don't think we can do anything with that, Rosalind. I think you've become super scholar. I mean, it's very impressive. Well done. Well done, Rosalind. Keep on the research stuff. It's very important. You're doing a really good job. Oh, and that's nice. Betty's having a chat with her mum. Oh, that is lovely. There she is. There's Antonia. And of course, Antonia is not going to die quite so soon because, yeah, we gave her one of the, uh, one of the magic life potions. However, still only 16.6 .6 days left. That's not very long at all, is it? Hang on. Let's have a quick check. So Horst is 20. Antonia is 16.6. .6. Dr. Pete also had a potion, didn't he? Dr. P had a potion as well. So, uh, so yeah, he's got 36.3 days. Rosalind, 28.2. That's fine. Hannah has now gone into the old age kind of stage, but she's got 61.4 days. And then Annika is going to get old in 47.7 days. And Wolfgang is getting old in 51.5 days. Wolfgang's a spring chicken. He's absolutely fine. He's absolutely fine. He's still got his wonderful moustache. Um, yeah, so Antonia does not have that long left again. I mean, she's already had one of the elixir things, which has made her feel dead inside. So that is um, that is of concern. However, Horst's penalty for that has gone. Horst no longer has the negative penalty for that. So it must wear off at some point. I think we saw it before, didn't we? But okay, that's fine. That's a good thing. Our people are going to be around for a little while. You know, they're not going to be around forever unless we keep plying them with magic potions of life, which guess what, everybody? We're absolutely 100% going to do. Look at that. Betty and Antonio just living the life there. They're just absolutely living the life. They're just lying down, enjoying the lovely sort of, you know, the autumn sun. It's not too hot. It's just lovely right now. Nice and warm. Feeling all very good. This is nice, look. I mean, you could have laid down next to each other, possibly. And then you could have done that game where you look up at the clouds and see what shapes you can see and such like. But do you know what? It's fine. Some nice mother-daughter time. Slightly distant. Socially distanced mother-daughter time. But it's still fine. It's still a lovely moment. Well done, you two. Oh, no. Antonia's done. Oh, and now Betty's done. Are you going to have a chat instead? Oh, no. Oh, hang on. Antonia's doing some... What are you doing? You're telling a risky joke to a child. Oh, and Betty loved the risky joke. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is fine. And then they're just going to sit down again. Okay, I mean, this is good. I'm okay with this. I'm absolutely fine with this. How about, hang on, what's Betty's stamina like? Yeah, okay. Now, I know this will take you away from doing the important research stuff, Rosalind, but could you go and educate Betty? Because Betty is not really doing anything right now. So yes, okay, she's picking up lots of positive childhood experience points. But um, yeah, she's not picking up any education points. Ah, she did pick up a few. And then I think has um, has Rosalind gone to bed? Yes, Rosalind was quite tired. Now, of course, when the uh, learning stops, the research point things come down. The fat family would like one lot of traders garments. Yeah, OK, it's fine. Don't come and attack us, please. So yeah, these are decreasing now. So we could do with somebody coming over. Oh, that's Antonio. That's fine. Right, hang on. Rosalind. Ah, you're coming back to educate Betty again. This is good. This is good. I mean, if we could just... I know she's a bit tired of studying. I know she's a bit bored. But if we could get that up to the top... And now Betty's gone. <laughs> Betty, where have you gone? She's gone to... She's gone to bed. But positive childhood experiences. There's another one. There is another one. But education is coming down a little bit. Okay, right. We'll have to keep an eye on this. We'll keep an eye on this. So when are you going to get up, Betty? When are you going to wake up? Because it might be a good idea for Horst as well, given that you know, he's your dad. Let's get you to go and educate Betty as well. Where are you going, Betty? Oh, you you and you and Mum are spending a lot of quality time together. And then Horst comes in. Dad comes in and goes, ah, right, go do some learning. <laughs> Boo, away with you, Dad. 
Okay, tired of studying is minus four, but she's got lots of positive experiences. Oh my goodness me, the pirates are coming back again. Okay, they would like nine, 992 coins. I rather think not, pirate face. Um, okay, now they will come and attack us. Are we ready for a fight? Are we ready for a fight? Or do we give the pirates the money? The thing is, I don't want to lose anybody. Do not want to lose anybody in a fight. However, I think enough time has passed for us to call upon help from the goblins and the traders again. I think that's probably a thing that we could do. So if we say, no, get the heck out of town, we can call upon aid. Okay, this is fine. No, forget it. Are you sure this isn't going to end well for you? What we could do is, what we could do, we could run, so say yes now. Say, yeah, sure, we'll do it for you. And then when they actually come to the island and say, okay, hope you got that stuff for us, we say, no, clear off. And then that gives us a bit of time. We know when they're going to attack. We'll then have a, a solid fixed point where we know they're going to come and get us. So maybe that's what we should do. So sort of lie to them a bit, but they are pirates. So, you know, it's probably not so bad. So, okay, we'll make it for you. So in four days, they're going to turn up and want a load of money and we're going to say no. But hopefully by that point, we could have then, you know, sort of, I don't know, got some more armour in or got some better weapons and trained people up and so on and so forth. Right, better, you're nearly done. There you go. Right, no more educating. Go over here, please. Do some more, whatever you've got to do. Go over there and analyse crystals, possibly. I don't know. I don't know if there are crystals left to analyse, but uh, you can go and do that. Oh, look at this. They're just absolutely flying through this stuff. It is wonderful. We're going to have forging done in not very long at all. And I think all of the crystal research is done for forging. I think now it's just scrolls because they were both over here doing crystal research. One person finished and then they both wandered off. Now, yeah, I think uh, Rosalind did go back to do some more scroll stuff. But yeah, I think that's it now. I think it's just, what, eight, eight more scrolls? And we've got nine available. So we should be able to get forging done in the very near future. And that's going to be very good because that gives us, I mean, okay, a heavy metal chest. Yeah, okay, fine. But a forge. And a forge means we can make things out of metal, of course. We can make iron axes and iron pickaxes and a chandelier as well which is nice so you know we can make a lovely bit of fancy lighting for our lovely room here but uh yeah we can make iron axes and iron pickaxes which will help the people do their jobs of chopping down trees and getting stone and resources and stuff and then of course when we get to uh, weapon forging we can make iron swords that'll be very very good indeed but okay a little way off yet from that a little way off but very soon everybody we could have a chandelier in here for no readily available reason just because you know why not it's a chandelier it's fancy antonia i know that you've been doing many things for almost 10 years in this game now but perhaps you could carry on doing some things because i can't help but notice that you now spend most of your time just sort of lying around the place i mean does our mine over here have crystals left in it yes it does 24 out of 40 crystals remain in our deep crystal mine. Why are you not going over to make the most of that? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know why they're not doing that. Ah, also, have we also got a harvest of pumpkins in already? Yes, we've got 52 pumpkins. Oh, that's very good. Oh, right, that's that's excellent news. I'm happy about that. Um, So, yes, now, is it something to do with this? Do we need to say, um, designate, does it need to be like a designated area? Ah, yes. Yes, it does. Because we've said only mine designated rocks and doors. That's the problem. Although, to be fair, there are there's some rocks over there. And there. And there. And there. And there. We've told you to go and get many things. Why are you not getting the many things? <laughs> Antonio, come on. Right, okay. I'm, I'm ordering you into the mine. Go into the mine, but obviously come out when you're a bit hungry. Don't die or anything. Don't die of starvation in a mine. That would be bad. But uh, yeah, go and get us some crystals, please. Because it seems a bit silly that we built this mine, which you know, conveniently is right outside your house. It's right outside your house. But no, you've decided to get some crystals. And then where are you going? You're going to go into... You're stealing Dr. Pete's food. Okay, that's fine. Oh, and Betty's coming in as well. She's just sort of standing there, warming, warming herself by the, uh, by the fireplace. 
And winter is here, the unsubtle transition into winter in Founder's Fortune. Because look, snow, everybody. Snow equals winter. It is a universally known truth. And I think the farmers have just done the final bit of farming work to get rid of the crops that they couldn't you know, get out the ground in time. I think there was some healing, healing plant things and some whatever is down here. I don't know what that is. Wheat or potatoes or whatever. So, you know, a few bits and bobs. That's fine. Right, okay. Wolfgang, how near are you to getting another point? You're 73 of the way there. And over here with Annika, 95. Okay, right, Annika, can you go over here, please, and learn about farming? That would be useful. And Wolfgang, go over there and train for combat, please. Because you're not going to be able to do anything else. You're farmers, but the weather is not quite good enough for farming. So we might as well train you up. Do the rest of the bits and bobs. Right, Annika can now cook at a kitchen. That's going to be very helpful. That's going to be helpful. So now we've got all the people, all the farmers can cook at the kitchen. So yeah, if Annika just gets one more point in farming, that means that she can then cook at the sort of bakery thing. And that just spreads the load out a bit, doesn't it? It just means that we've not got poor Hannah having to do all of the cooking of everything all the time. How are you doing, Wolfgang? It looks like Wolfgang might be about to get a point in fighting. There we go. Right, good job. So you can now use stone swords. I think that's going to be very, very handy indeed. Particularly because, yes, in two days we're going to have some pirates coming around. So, uh, Wolfgang, how about you go over... C come inside. It's fine. You're not going to be able to do anything else useful. Yeah, we can't train you up in anything else immediately useful right now. So go over to there for now. It'll all be fine. And then over... Where would it be? In here, I suppose, in the Mason's Workshop. Can we please make a stone sword? Because that would be very, very useful indeed. Because then that means you've got another person that can at least give a bit of a fight to the pirates when they turn up. The thing is, Horst is currently busy working on the tailoring stuff. And he has got quite a few things to do. Okay, and Annika is a level 7 farmer. This is all going very well. Uh, Annika, what are your skills in soldiering? You can also use stone swords. Hang on, do you have a stone sword? Um... Uh, yes, you do have a stone sword. Okay, that is good. Have we got a stone sword in reserve? No, just a wooden sword. Bother. Okay, never mind. Um, right, Horst, I know you're very busy doing that, but could you come over here and do this instead? Because I don't imagine it takes as long to make a stone sword. Uh, fashion stone into point, put handle on, sorted. There you go, all done. Why can't we use these? Like These look like particularly brutal weapons. That thing there, though, flat bit for bludgeoning, sharp bit for... Jabbing. <laughs> That's what we should use. This kind of fancy looking hammer type thing. But okay, this is all good. So horse can get on with that. Betty's just doing a little bit of uh, a little bit of dancing around the fireplace. That's fine. 18 positive childhood experiences. That is wonderful. And again, they all seem to be coming from eating cake and not doing much. But okay, put somebody else down. Oh, that's not nice. Hang on, what did it say? You had to go at Dr. Pete. Well, that's a bit mean. Oh, Betty. Right, well, let's try and discourage that kind of behaviour. That's not nice at all. And Annika. Annika got a point in farming, didn't she? Hang on a second. Yeah, so now she can work at the bakery. So there we go. This is excellent stuff. And Wolfgang. Can you come over here now? Oh, hang on, Annika. You don't need to learn any more about farming. You've already learned all there is to learn about farming. Let Wolfgang have a go. Um, Annika. Yeah, there's no point getting you trained up in fighting either. Because there's nothing else that you can have that's going to be of any use, really. Um, how about, hang on, hang on a second. She's got, she's got medium armour. Can wear medium armour. Can we craft? Yeah, of course we can. We must be able to do that. Um, so what would it be? Single plate armour? Because we can make it. We must have the technology to do that. So let's make some single plate armour as well. Let's get one lot of that in. So 40 cloth, 20 iron ore. And they are going to do that first, are they? I mean, we still need the sword done. We still need the sword done. But of course, he's not crafting as quickly anymore because he's in his fancy brainy clothes, not his uh, not his crafting clothes. So it might take him a little while. I think we'll have the sword done in one and a half days' time. So we might not have that armour done, but at least Wolfgang can go in with a, you know, a slightly jabbier sword. And I think Wolfgang might be about to gain a point in farming. Well done. So let us go to here. And you can have baking at the bakery. In fact, he's got two points available. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, you can learn how to use the bakery. It's over there. You know, go now if you would like to. And you can sow some strawberries. And then, yeah, sowing wheat is the next one. And then that means you're done as well. Okay, that's good. 
That means that all of our farmers will have all of the farming skills available to them. So they can do whatever is required, whether it be tending to anything on the farm or using any of the various cooking stations. Okay, that's really good. That is very, very good. Wow, the goblins are all about the traders' garments at the minute, are they? So the honourable warriors have said, we want traders' garments. Now, yeah, maybe with those guys, I'd say, I'd normally say no. I'd normally say, nope, clear off, away with you, because that's a waste of time, because they hate us anyway. So if we say yes, they're just going to hate us a tiny bit less. They're still going to really, really hate us, just not quite as passionately. But um, of course, in one day's time, we're going to be fighting some pirates. So I don't want to have to have a fight with the goblins that might end up with some of our people, you know, even taking a scratch or whatever. So it's traders' garments. I don't know what we can do with those. Perhaps the traders might find it a bit suspicious if we keep trying to trade back you know, their own people's clothes to them. So yeah, okay, it's fine. You can have that. So minus 34. They still don't like us, but it's fine. It's all good. And Horst, no pressure, but you have a day. You've got a day to finish that thing. Right, that's good. And now over here, what are you going to be working on? Yeah, you're finishing something off. I think it's going to be the clothes that you started. Okay, never mind. Right, Wolfgang. Um, whereabouts are all of your things? So where's your weapon rack? Wolfgang, currently with a bow. Um, okay, no, we'll swap that out. We'll swap that out. Have a stone sword, please. Have a stone sword. There we go. So Wolfgang has got a sort of a half decent weapon now to his name. Not quite as good as a proper, you know, metal sword, but yeah, it's all right. It's better than a wooden one. It might be worth checking the load out of some people, actually. So Horst has a stone sword available. That's very good. Antonia has a wooden sword, I think. Yes, I think that's a wooden sword. I think that's all you can do, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's fine. Again, it's better than no sword at all. Um, Dr. Pete, you've got nothing. Dr. Pete has nothing at all. Have you got any kind of combat training, Dr. Pete? No, nothing. Dr. Pete, what are you up to now? Oh, you're eating food. Okay, that probably is allowed. I'll let you have some food. Wolfgang is a level seven farmer. This is wonderful. Sow some wheat. And now, Wolfgang, you can stop. You can stop doing the learning now, Wolfgang. It's fine. Go and do what you will. Right, Dr. Pete, could we very quickly, in 0.8 days, try and train you up in combat? That would be really good because you do have, yeah, you're kind of, what, two thirds of the way there. So if we could get you really good at martial arts, that would be useful because then you could just go in unarmed and just punch people, which would be very handy indeed. Right, Rosalind has a wooden sword. Are you trained in that kind of thing? Yes, you are. Okay, that's that's okay. That's better than nothing. Um, Hannah has a bow. And yes, you're the only person that we have that use the bow, but that's fine. That's okay. Annika. Annika now, yes, yeah, she's got, yeah, she can use up to metal swords and heavy armor. So yeah, Annika can be our tank in the future, but right now she's got a stone sword and yeah, just sort of basic armor, but that's fine. And then Wolfgang, yeah, stone sword, basic armor. And then Betty, you can just hide. Right, Dr. Pete, it's all coming down to you at the moment. If we can get you trained up, that would be quite handy. Stamina and hunger looking pretty good. That is good. So you're not going to have to run off and have a sleep or eat or anything before this is done. So yeah, there we go. Horse is a level 30 craftsman. <laughs> What's the point of telling me now? What's the point? It doesn't do anything. And Pete is a level 2 soldier, which is very handy. So do we give him that martial arts? He can deal extra damage when he is unarmed. Because that, I think that, that's going to be useful. I think that's going to be a useful thing. And we could, so you can fight with a wooden sword. Because I notice he is carrying the, um, he's carrying an axe, isn't he? And he's going to use that to fight, I believe. So maybe we should actually give him a wooden sword for now. Again, not brilliant, but better than nothing. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Do you know what, Dr. Pete? It's fine. You can have a proper weapon. You don't have to go sort of all sort of exciting ninja on them. You can uh, you can chop at them with a sword and such. Uh, yeah, okay, wooden swords. And then Dr. Pete, just there. I think we should have a wooden sword spare. There it is. Splendid. I mean, in hindsight, should we have given Dr. Pete archery? And then he could have had a bow with archery two points. Oh, archery's two points. Maybe that's why we didn't do that then. Yay, I was kind of vaguely aware of that. Okay, no, and now it's fine. Dr. Pete, just go and sort of stand over there for a bit. So, um, yes, we've got half a day until the pirates are going to arrive. And they are going to be cross with us. They're going to be very, very cross indeed. However, if we could finish this scroll research in half a day, that would be wonderful. Because then that's that out of the way. Come on, Rosalind. Oh, Rosalind, you're breaking my heart. Where's Horst? 
Annika and Betty just chilling out around the fire. You're going to have a talk and you're going to make medicine. Oh, that's Dr. P. Hang on. Yep. Rosalind has gone to sleep. Horst is also asleep. Horst, when you're done, just come here and do some research. You're going to go and tailor some clothes. Oh, my goodness me. Horst, that is very good. But can you just go and finish analysing a scroll? This is not well-timed, goblins. <laughs> this is very unfortunately timed. Okay. So we're going to be attacked by goblins anyway, even though we didn't want this to happen. Um, they are quite some way off. They're quite some way off. Why can I see their ones in red as well? Can we just see all the rival goblins in red? Because, yeah, they're in red. They're in red. We can see their red health bars. But over here, they're not. But I suppose they are our friends. But, yeah, in the 0.3 days, we've got some pirates coming by who might also want to kill us a little bit. Um... Hang on, Horst. Now go, go and analyse that scroll, Horst. Go and sort that scroll out. I'm just going to get that done. Boom. Forging is unlocked. Hooray! <laughs> Long last. Right. Pause time for a second. Um, how do you make a chandelier? Lights. Chandelier. I realise we're going to be attacked by goblins, but chandelier. Um, let's put it over here. Let's put it over the dining table. Just pop a chandelier in. There we go. I mean, we don't need this at all. It's a completely superfluous thing, but yeah, it's nice. I forgot we were going to put some street lights in, weren't we? We were going to do that at some point. Let's... Can we start outlining them? That'd be quite nice. Just have a few of those. I like the tall ones as well. I like these ones. We need, what, 10 stone and 5 iron. Oh, we haven't got much in the way of iron ore. Uh, we'll put one street light just there, and that kind of might be it for a while. <laughs> it's okay for lights. Uh, right, and now we possibly do need to get ready for a bit of a a bit of a rumble. So everybody, can you go and get your get your fighting things ready? That would be nice. So here we go. Let's just speed time on a little bit. So is everybody ready? I think everybody except oh, the goblins are at the wall already. I think Wolfgang is still. Unfortunately, Wolfgang is still changing, and he's the one who's nearest the wall. With the, oh no, Wolf, Wolfgang, Wolfgang, no. That would be a foolish thing to do. Oh, my goodness me. Right, okay. All of you lot, apart from... No, not not Betty. No, no, no. Okay, everybody else except Betty and Wolfgang, who's decided that he can take on the goblins without putting his armour on. He's going to go and kill them with the watering can. Um, right. Everybody else, come out here, fight. The Wolfgang's just gone straight back out anyway. Oh, Wolfgang. What is the point of issuing you these commands if you're just going to ignore them? <laughs> okay. Right, the thing is people are taking damage. Antonia's taking some damage. The goblins are certainly tougher. I mean, that goblin does look... They've got some form of armour on. Okay, we've got 0.1 days until the pirates arrive. Okay, everyone head back in here. That would be good. So, okay, we can't move time on, unfortunately. Yeah, it just makes a little kind of... A little rude noise at us. Right, Antonia, I would like you to go and have a healing potion, please. Because you are slightly, I say slightly injured. You're on about, what, a third less health, possibly? So that's that's pretty bad. So you go and heal up, please. If you can, if you'd be so kind. Are you doing that or not? What are you doing? He healing potion. Ah, there we go. Come on, then take the healing potion. Okay, we need to select some research. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Weapon forging. Let's have weapon forging. Right, and then everybody. Right, Betty. Whereabouts are you, Betty? We'll stand you down. You don't need to do fighting. Um... Go and sit in a chair. Go and have a sit in a chair. It's a very exciting chair. And we will wait for the pirates to come by. Then we'll tell them to go away, because that's what we'll do. Do you have what we asked for? We've changed our mind. You are getting nothing, Captain Hans. You're going to regret this. Okay. And then immediately we will go over to our goblin friends. Okay, we'll use this screen and go over to our goblin friends and say hello. The humble people really, really hate us. Wow. That is, that's spectacularly terrible. They really don't like us. Um, okay. Contact. Come and help defend. That's good. And can we please have the traders coming in as well? Contact. Uh, please come and help defend. Yes. Okay. We have people coming in. And because we've got traders in, we might be able to do a spot of trading as well. Right. So the only thing is, Wolfgang, are you getting your fighting things ready? Yes. Okay. Wolfgang is now ready for a fight. That is everybody. Okay, so now we just wait for the pirates to arrive. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Please don't go wrong, Betty. Betty, why are you wandering off? Right, 
They're over here. The pirates. Oh, no, no, they're not the pirates. No, they're the they're the guild. Oh, this is wonderful. Where are the pirates then? So the goblins are here, and the 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 traders are here, who have gone into that house for some reason. It's a bit cold out. It's fine, but um, yeah, the pirates aren't here. Oh no, I thought they were going to attack immediately, but nope, they've. Uh... <laughs> We've called in our friends a little bit too early. I mean, they do hang around for a while. Uh, uh, you know, hopefully they hang around for a long while because it does not look... Ah, thank goodness for that. Okay, <laughs> right. We're being attacked by pirates, but it's all fine because we've got trader friends and... Oh, they're... Oh, they're <gasps> they've just destroyed one of our wells. Why would you do... You're pirates. You're vandals. You steal gold and you go, yar. you don't... Knock down wells. Oh, that's just really inconvenient. Um, okay, right. They're going out that way. So we will come down here. Because look, some of them are going over there fighting the trader guild people. So yeah, they're trying to get in here. So how about we run in over here and we just have a fight with them pretty much immediately. Oh, they're breaking all the walls down. No, not good. Right, there. Fight. So they're over here. One pirate, A couple of pirates are down. This is useful, I think. Are the goblins coming in as well? Yep, our goblin friends are coming in. Oh, this is going to be a doddle. This is going to be absolutely fun. Pete's taking a little bit of a kick in. In fact, Dr. Pete, would you like to come out of there? Come over here, please, Dr. Pete. Because we don't want you to go down. Of all the people we want to get injured, we do not want the doctor to be injured. <laughs> that would be bad. I think... I think that's it. I think our friends... From the Traders Guild over here dealt with three of the pirates. There's a big pile <laughs> that made them into a nice pirate Jenga tower. That's good. Um, yeah, they dealt with them over there, which was very handy because that was three people that we didn't have to do anything with, which is really useful. Right, Antonia, I think is... Antonia is starving. Okay. Do you know what, Antonia? Uh, go and... Oh, hang on. Stand down, everybody. Stand down. Antonia, go and get some food. Go and eat kitchen food, Antonia. And Dr. Pete, it looks like you might also need to go and eat some food, actually, Dr. Pete. In fact, everybody can just stand down. Everybody can stand down. Is there anybody that's not starving? Is there anybody that's not really hungry? Right, Rosalind. Okay, come over here. Remove equipment. Remove equipment. And remove equipment from those over there, please. That would be good. And then, from over here, um, who have we got? Antonia. Oh, no, you're, you're starving. You're the one who's starving. It's fine. Um, Annika, you're starving. Wolfgang, you're starving. Oh, crikey. Everyone's starving to death. Come on, just go get some food, everybody. <laughs> go get food before you change back into your normal clothes. Anytime. Anyone? Please don't starve to death because this would make everybody sad. Right, and Tony's eating some food, everybody. Hooray. And Dr. Peter, I think, has had some food. <laughs> He's just telling Betty war stories about what just happened. Okay, Rosalind, you're still looking good. So let's remove equipment from you and remove remove equipment and remove equipment. Oh, there's somebody in the garden over there. Remove equipment from them. Oh, and there's somebody on this wall. <laughs> okay, remove equipment from them as well. So many, many items of equipment now being removed. And what we should do is, is Dr. P actually okay? He's, yeah, he's not looking great, is he? Um, hang on, is anybody else a diplomat? Mm -hmm. Do we have any other diplomats? I don't think we do. Might be a good idea to make somebody else a diplomat, possibly. Um, yeah, okay, Dr. Pete, when you're finished eating, could you go and have a little word with the traders? Because they're here and we can do some trading with them. And they might have some interesting things on them. Yay! Oh, no, it's the same thing. They've not kind of refreshed the list yet or whatever. I suppose we could sell them some stuff. We have got some Master Forester's clothes we don't need. That's 350 money coming our way. And what about some illness medicine? We'll just max that out, actually. Uh, we can get a 1,000 coins from this deal. Yeah? Okay, that seems sensible. Let's do that. And then, actually, Dr. P, can we talk to the goblins? If we trade right now... Can we get another elixir of youth? Pay 1,161 money, but then we get another one of those in. So, yes, okay, and they're right here. We don't have to wander about doing all that kind of stuff. Oh, and Rosalind running in and just doing a spot of impromptu building. Right, there is a big hole in the wall over here. So Dr. Pete needs his um, 
his wall replacing. So uh, which one was it? However, hang on. Look on the side of the house. It's got angled bits on it, but no bit through the middle. So it's that one there. So fill in that hole, please. And then over here, there was a well that was very rudely destroyed by the pirates. Uh, hang on, which way around is that well? That way. So we just put that just there. There we go. Right, I think that was all the damage they did. Somebody's in low spirits because he's, oh, he's, in, he's in real pain. Doctor, you're again, you're a doctor. Take a healing potion, Dr. Pete. You make these all day, <laughs> all the time. So there you go. You should heal up a bit very soon and not be in quite so much pain, hopefully. Uh, what's happening with the pirates? Oh, we're all we're all murdering the pirates. Okay. <laughs> There's now <laughs> we've now got a collection of pirate corpses dotted around the place. Um right. How many dead pirates are there? One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Let's get three more graves dug in the pirate graveyard. There we go. Wolfgang's dug the graves. However, he is complaining that they can't get to the um they can't get to the thing. They can't get to the uh, chandelier that we put in. We'll put it there then, don't worry. In fact, can I go in the middle a little bit? Maybe sort of there. That'll do. So it's near to the uh, it's near to the dining table. Um, and could you start burying some people, please? Because we don't want these sort of corpses littering our wonderful, beautiful town. Oh, there's another person round the corner. Hang on a minute. <laughs> More pirate graves. I've just realised that we haven't played Fairy Godmother at all. We've not granted anybody any wishes of any kind. I mean, is there anything we can do that just makes lots of people happy all in one go? Um, Horst wants to have another kid and throw a party. I mean, those two things could be linked. That's fine. And Tony wants a shelf of baked food in her house. Yeah, we could do that. We could easily do that. Lots of people are wanting a party. Rosalind wants the lofty goal of sitting in a chair. Right, baked food. Antonia and Rosalind. Uh, and Hannah wants a chair in her house. Okay, do you know what? Just just to make sure that you know, I keep to my word at the very start of this video, let's play Fairy Godmother a little bit. So, um, yeah, seating. Let us get a lovely chair in... Oh, hang on. Was it Hannah? Yes, Hannah wants a chair. Okay, Hannah, where's... Which one is your house? This one is your house. Um, let's get you a chair then. I mean, why you can't do this on your own? I don't know. You've already got a comfy looking chair as it is. Okay, have this... Slightly less comfortable looking chair. There you go. You can have a chair. And then, shelf for baked food. Not enough iron ore. Oh, botherations. Okay, right. Not that then. Annika, is there anything you'd like? A couch. Okay. Where is your house? Uh, that one there. Okay, we can have a couch. Oh, there's some goblins sleeping in your house. <laughs> I hope you're okay with that sort of thing. Uh, right. A comfy couch. If we're going to do it, we'll do it properly. Next to the chair. And Wolfgang wants a fireplace and also to throw a party. So throwing a party does seem to be a very popular thing. Okay, that's fine. But a fireplace. Uh, okay, decoration. And we're going to do it. Oh, we want the decadent fireplaces. If we're going to put fireplaces in people's houses, we want to have the fancy ones. Alas, we do not have the iron ore for that kind of stuff. Okay. I mean, that's sort of ruined the plans of playing Fairy Godmother, hasn't it, really? <laughs> We've not really done that per se. But there you go. One wish fulfilled. We're a, you know, a, a low budget fairy godmother. It's fine. We're part time. It's all we had time for. Um, there we go. That is, uh, that's one person's wish fulfilled. We need some iron ore to do the rest of that kind of stuff. Oh no. Oh no, there's a dead goblin. Oh, that's not good. That's going to make the place look untidy. Hang on a minute. Um, there's one grave site empty. So I think there is a person round there still. Oh, bother. Right, okay. We need yet another grave. <laughs> Let's put that over there. And hopefully somebody will clear the bodies out at some point. Somebody will move things around and chuck them in the graves. Okay, a trader has arrived. That's very good. We're going to have a talk with them in a second. But uh, but yes, Annika, I think that's Annika, isn't it? Yep, Annika is now a little bit happier because we met one of her wishes. We granted her the wish of this uh, couch here. So there we go. We're not quite as terrible a fairy godmother as we could have been. Right, very quickly, um, Dr. Pete, can you go and have a word with these folks over here, please? And just see what they've got for sale. And an inspiration has hit Peter. It struck him like a bolt of lightning. Oh, 
Okay, well, that's certainly interesting. I mean, you're still talking here. Right, okay, do some trading. Now, we do need one scroll from you lot. They've got 13 scrolls. Oh, my goodness me. Can we have all of those, please? Because that will be wonderful. We've got enough storage for them. We're down to one scroll right now. The thing is, we need 2,000 coins to pay for that. So how about have some farmer clothes, some master farmer clothes. That's 350. Then we've got ourselves a, a pirate captain's suit. Then we've got seven lots of pirate clothes. You are welcome to those. Have all of those. That means we're going to pay 234 money. Um, they're not interested in the healing medicine. Uh, healing medicine. The, 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 whatever it is. The medicine stuff, not the healing potions. The actual illness medicine. Oh, okay. I don't really want to pay out any money for it. So why don't we make a tiny bit of profit by selling five of our nine healing potions. So we're going to get 16 scrolls and we're going to give them uh, a load of... Uh, what's that? 12? Oh, no, sorry. I thought we'd given that away. No, we're keeping our cake. No, hands off the cake. Uh, we're giving them five of our healing potions, all of the pirate clothes, because we don't care, and the pirate captain suit, and the master farmer's clothes that we made for the purpose of selling. So there you go. We're going to make 266 money, even though we're buying 13 scrolls. Yes. A pleasure doing business with you. That was very good. Look at that. We've got 14 scrolls. 14 scrolls. And I don't know if we've done any scroll work yet, but that is very good. Okay, that is splendid. And on that note, I think we will leave things for now. Next time, when we come back, I will try and go through and play Fairy Godmother properly and do lots of wishes for people. Kind of got distracted on that one by the pirates and the research and stuff. So yeah, we'll try and um, give people lots of wishes. It looks like a party might be the best thing we can do for lots of people, even though it doesn't always work. It does not always work. And we might need to think about giving Antonia another Elixir of Life potion because, yeah, she's only got ten and a half days left and we don't want to lose our people, although we don't know if we can stack them. I've got no idea. I don't know if we can stack them up. Will it work again? I'm not entirely sure. We will find out next time out. But yeah, we'll finish things up for the moment. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be very, very lovely indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Founder's Fortune. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. She's still heartbroken. <laughs> She's still sick. Oh, Colleen, you're, this, this is not your day, is it? Sean Bozzini is going to defecate. How's the lounge looking? <laughs> Do you like the plants? I left them there, especially for you guys. <laughs> is there some sort of terrible apocalypse which I need to know about? He's just defecated in a bush.